Hey guys, Jim here. I have a new acquisition that I'm very excited to share with everybody. Uh, the name is The Reaper, and it's made by a gentleman named Eric Kramer. Uh, you can visit him over at KramerCustomKnives.com or uh, over on his Instagram, which he's just uh, kind of started really getting into under Kramer Custom Knives. Really simple to find. This is a gentleman that, uh, I'll be honest with you, I had not had the delight to get to know before the Blade Show. And I was sitting in the pit one night, I do believe it was Friday night, and I was sitting there with uh, Justin Laffer and a few other guys, and Justin goes, I got a knife that I've got to show you that I think you're going to fall in love with. And he hands me his Kramer Reaper. Except his had a different blade profile because Eric actually offers this knife with three different blade profiles. And I started looking in the fit and finish and I was astounded. I'm like, this is one hell of an amazing knife. What did you see the guy's name was again? I've never heard of him. So he started telling me more about him and I had the chance the uh, next day to finally meet him. And we kind of hit it off right away. What a super phenomenal, uh, very laid back kind of guy, very quiet, very non-assuming, uh, but really, really, really intelligent and seems to really know what people want in a knife. And he's been doing fixed blades for uh, quite a long time now, but uh, he's really kind of just getting into this whole tactical folder market. And this is one of a few designs that he's doing, and they're just amazing. And you're going to see why in a minute. You might be looking at this going, okay, well, it's nice looking materials. It's a really cool, aggressive blade shape, but I don't see why you're putting this in your top 10. You're going to see that in just a few minutes. Let's talk about the knife in general. Um, it's got a 3 and 5 eighths inch blade. Give you a nice look at that. And you'll see there's a lot of different styles coming together in this one profile. The overall length is eight and three quarter inches open, closed, it's five and one eighths of an inch. In my particular variation, uh, he basically allowed me to name off anything that I wanted to do to it. So I went with marbled carbon fiber since that is my favorite style of carbon fiber. And not very easy to get your hands on, so I'm very, very impressed with it. And I wanted to go with kind of a dark look all the way through, so we just did a really nice bead blasted, then stone washed on the bolsters. Very nice dark wash on the blade. And I wanted a pop of color, and he's doing some really great anno work, and we talked about a few different things. And I told him that one of my favorite color combinations currently, especially against something black like carbon fiber, is I like using uh, Toxic Green G10. He says, well, I can actually anodize titanium to the point where it almost looks like toxic green G10. It's not your standard anodized green. And he freaking nailed it. And I think the color combination on this just sets this knife apart from everything else in my collection. Now, Eric does everything himself. He does his own stock removal for his blades. He hand builds everything, hand grinds everything. And he even does his own heat treat. Now, this particular knife here for me, everything is completely hand ground on this. But on three models going forward, including this one, he's going to be water jetting his blanks in order to save him some time. But they're still going to be ground down to the proper size and all the fitment done by hand. So you're still going to be getting a full custom knife. But as he's now making that transition into full-time knife maker and taking on a lot more orders, he realizes he's got to find a way to speed up the process like so many other makers do. So he's going to be doing it that way for some of his models. Oh, God, I love the action on this thing. Now, it's actually the... Uh, the liners on my knife served uh, to be the measurements and everything for the computer file that he's generating uh, for the future, uh, doing that with the water jet. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Uh, let's see. So all the bolsters and handle materials are still going to be cut by hand. And he's even making his own thumb studs on his lathe. So these are uh, completely hand done by him on his lathe. And this is the very first time he's actually used titanium thumb studs on any of the reapers uh, on this particular knife uh, and the titanium clip that we see here and the sculpted style clip is only the second one that he's done on a reaper justin beat me out on that one he got the very first sculpted clip on his but that's okay 
Now, my knife is also the very first to use phosphor bronze washers. Uh, he was using the Teflon style washers before and while they worked really great, he wanted to see if he could get a faster and even smoother action out. So he opted to try the phosphor bronze washers on here and he says it greatly smoothed out the action over his previous knives. And I got to tell you, this is... You guys know that I'm mainly a flipper guy and he's not ready to release this in a flipper until next year. But when it comes to my thumb stud opening knives, my favorite is my Jero's Model 100. It is the smoothest and fastest, the greatest action. And this comes in just barely behind it. It feels fan-freaking-tastic. It is so just buttery smooth. It really is Sebenza-like. I mean, that's obviously going to be the influence there, having the phosphor bronze washers. Everything is just perfect. The tension on the liner lock, the tension on the pivot, everything is perfect. Nothing too tight, but it doesn't feel loose or wiggly or anything like that. Now, each of them will be engraved with serial numbers. He does them, uh, I think he said, on the non-locking side all the way up by the backspacer. Mine is serial number number nine. And... Who knows how many he's going to make in the course of this year, but it's it's still not going to be enough. Because when you talk about the pricing on these, it, it gets pretty damn incredible. You're looking at the standard base model of this knife would be 500 bucks. Now, again, keep that in mind. That is the same price that most makers would charge you for a mid-tech knife. And this is a full custom hand-built knife. Now, on the standard configuration, you're getting all sandblasted and stonewashed blades, liners, uh, and clip with a single piece of uh, G10 for the handles. Those clips would be uh, press-formed, and you'd get steel thumb studs. Now, if you upgrade to the level that I did, the marble carbon fiber raises at $100. All the extra things that were done here, mine was actually $735. So, you can really, you know, go balls to the wall and option it out however you'd like. It just depends on how much you want to spend. But I think he's probably one of the most reasonable priced in the level of making that he's doing. Now, here's the deal. Here's why I fell in love with this knife when I first saw Justin's and now obviously carried over into mine. You have a longer bolster style and it's an angled bolster and I love the aesthetics of that. I think it looks fantastic. The thing that jumped out to me, and this was sitting in the restaurant at the pit, you know, in the middle of the night, very dim lighting, and I was still able to pick this out. And it was funny because I saw Justin's little face light up like, aha, he saw what I saw and why I fell in love with it. It's the way that he's mating the materials together. Now, I'm calling this a dovetail. There may be a, a more precise way of naming that, but the way he's actually fitting that titanium bolster and the marble carbon fiber together is fantastic. And it's done in a way that I really hadn't seen anybody do prior to him. I also love the way that he forms his backspacer. And the clean lines all the way through. And you can see through the jimping in the uh, spine of the frame that the carbon fiber, titanium, titanium backspacer, and then going back and forth. Everything is seamless and perfect. There is no detectable, no perceptible difference in the height or thickness on any of these materials. Almost glass-like smooth, even though you can still see a bit of a seam in between the carbon fiber and the bolster. You just don't feel it, man. It is incredible. You see that fitment again right here. It's just wonderfully conceived, wonderfully executed. And typically I'm not a big fan of having additional hardware, especially on a bolstered knife. There's something about this knife that kind of carries almost an industrial look that makes me love having the extra hardware. Sure, having hidden hardware and stuff is really awesome, and that's almost always my preference. But on this knife, I'm totally okay with it. Now, some people might be a little skeptical about the usefulness of this blade shape. Now, this was actually, Al, <laughs> that wasn't fun. This was actually designed 
for a very specific purpose. This is based off of his fixed blade, uh, fixed blade knife called the Libre uh, Fighter. He's friends with a gentleman that created this fighting style called the Libre Fighting Style. It was, uh, the gentleman's name was, uh, oh, I don't want to forget this. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Scott Babb. And Scott had design input on the shape of the handles, the shape of the blade, and the way everything was going to be put together to fit in with the fighting style that he teaches. Because who wants to carry around a knife? to just cut cardboard boxes open. Sometimes you might have to think about the unfortunate event where you may have to reach for it as possibly a secondary backup, maybe a primary depending on uh, your lifestyle, in order to save your life. And this is a knife that was designed specifically for that. The way the handle is shaped, it will transition from one handhold to the other very fast and very securely in each of those hand styles. The blade style is also done in a specific way, and, and again, I am not a knife fighting expert, I'm not going to pretend to be, but watching a couple of the videos uh, that uh, Scott Babb has up and that uh, uh, Eric Kramer has up, listening to him describe the filleting process, you know, basically gliding up somebody's arm on the way up to their throat, which was the reason why the... the the cutting surface, the cutting edge was shaped the way it was. Uh, the, the very deep recess here, which you would want to think, well, it's for me just to kind of rest my thumb on when I'm doing some uh, precision cutting. And you most certainly can. Uh, but it was designed to be able to, to you know, rest your hand on for more forceful moves. It was also used uh, in, in, in blocking and, and sweeping arms out of the way on your attacker. I mean, stuff that is far beyond my comprehension. You can always go check out those videos. I guess you can just type in Libre Fighting Style into YouTube and you'll come across the videos. But everything on this knife was purpose-built for tactical fighting styles. And you know what? It's kind of nice to have a tactical knife because, you know, the tactical folding segment is exploding. It's so huge. It's kind of nice to have a knife that fits into that segment that has some pedigree that was really designed for those specific purposes. I kind of dig that. Other things I like about it, uh, very easy to access. The liner lock on here is recessed enough here to allow you to just slide your thumb over. You don't have to drop it all the way in and try and fight to get to your liner lock. Feels really, really nice. A little bit of uh, jimping on there to give you a little bit of added traction. I, I just can't get past the intense green color and he surprised me with the pocket clip because when we talked about the pocket clip uh, what I was expecting was the whole pocket clip to be in the green so you had this you know this awesome polished green pocket clip hanging out of your pocket what he did instead was and I actually like this better is he mashed up the pocket clip to the bolsters and then on the edges you have that screaming Hulk green I call it Viper Green. It's a very intense, bright, screaming green. And he did a great job matching that up. And it's only on the edges, so it's more of an accent. So you don't see green except for the thumb stud when you look at the sides of the knife. You see green, however, when you look at the back or in the front of the knife and accenting that only on those edges on the pocket clip. Very slick, very cool. If there was one con to this knife. One thing that I would change, and not everybody's going to agree with me, but some people like to carry with a lanyard, some people don't. I would love to have a lanyard opening here, just so if I felt the need on this particular knife that I wanted to carry it on a lanyard, that I could do it. And that's the only, the single one and only thing that I would change about this knife. And I'll be honest with you, if, if I had realized that it didn't and I said before the build, hey, would you put a lanyard opening? I can 100% guarantee you that he would have done that. So that's not a knock against Eric. I just should have paid more attention. But honestly, I've already carried this a couple of times and you know, I'm totally fine not carrying it uh, on a lanyard. It's just one of those things that sometimes you want to do, but it comes in and out of the uh, pocket super, super simple. So I don't really need to have it on there. Now, Eric just retired from the Coast Guard after a little over 20 years of service, so he is now officially a full-time knife maker. 
He uh, he was in there for about tw uh, 20 years and 10 months. Oh, my goodness. That's that's a whole lifetime spent uh, in the Coast Guard. That's pretty amazing. And uh, during that time, he was stationed everywhere from Key West to Alaska. And he spent the bulk of his career as an H-60 flight mechanic and aerial precision marksman. So, I mean, obviously, you're, you're seeing the influences of having that engineering, uh, the, having that skill as a mechanic uh, coming forward in your knives. And you're going to feel that when you the first time you pick it up and the first time you open it. And he says that his formal training was as an aviation mechanic. And after that, he was lucky enough to get in on uh, the formation of the Coast Guard's counterterrorism team on the aviation side of things as an aerial precision marksman. Now, I can't imagine <laughs> how difficult that job has to be and the training has to be for that. But uh, I like the fact that here's somebody that has this degree of skill in, in so many things. He also studies Taekwondo. Um, there are so many things. I'm sorry, not Taekwondo. I was thinking of somebody else there for a second. My apologies. Obviously, he's, he's uh, very well versed in hand-to-hand -hand combat and, and uh, knife, knife style fighting. This is somebody that is bringing knowledge from a lot of different areas together to create these knives. All of the attention to detail that you would expect from somebody like that is here. Now, he's been doing this for just under 10 years, so he's got the experience under his belt that if you throw a challenge at him here and there, I'm sure he can rise to the occasion. His fixed blades are awesome. You should definitely check those out on his website. I'm more of a folder guy, so this is much more my style. I honestly could not be happier. And if you're wondering, well, it's a difficult transition to go from making fixed blade knives to making a really good quality folder. And he hasn't been making folders all that long, so how do I know that my knife is going to be as nice as yours? Well, here's the funny thing. Some of you guys might recognize the name Jerry McGinnis. Oh, yeah. Well, Jerry McGinnis is the one that kind of brought him into folders and kind of gave him, you know, a little, little tutelage here and there. And basically pushed him, or inspired him possibly is the better word, into making high-quality tactical-style folders. And, and you guys know Jerry makes some insane quality knives. So I'm going to tell you this right now. If you've ever considered getting into a fighting style knife, and especially if you have the proficiency in which to use that with any degree of skill, you might want to check out Eric's work. The edge on this thing is absolutely insane. It is crazy sharp. I love the way that it feels in the hand. He has uh, chamfered the edges all the way around and softened everything so it's really, really comfortable in the hand. As I mentioned before, the integration of the materials and the different combinations uh, flow wonderfully. They feel great. Carbon fiber he's using is top notch. Look at that. Now he uses carbon fiber, lightning strike carbon fiber. He does offer marbled as an option. Uh, just be warned that it is an expensive option. It's not going to be an inexpensive option thing to get into. Oh, that green. I actually can't wait to see this when it's uploaded in full HD on my uh, on my big screen TV. Just to catch all maybe the little nuances that you know you, you might not see in person. This HD lens will pick up stuff that I didn't even notice. I'll have a knife for a week or two before I do a video sometimes and don't even notice something and it's not till I go to review the video later. Uh, that I go, oh, shit, well, there was this and there was that, and I didn't even notice that before. So I'm excited to see these colors pop. Wow. Now, here's the thing. As far as ordering from him, uh, his average time to build a folder is within two days, between 24 and 36 hours, which is pretty damn impressive. Uh, but the thing is, he's already got a few, he's got about 40 orders, he says, in queue, um, thanks to <laughs> me and Justin putting a whole bunch of pictures out of our knives. A lot of people have gotten a chance to see it. And listen, when Justin says, S you guys really need to pay attention to this maker, you really need to. You need to take his advice because uh, he certainly knows his shit. 
but he is accepting orders. Again, he's just now making that transition. He retired only last week from the Coast Guard. So he is taking those orders. You can get on his books. But at this point now, if you're just now ordering, this is, uh, what, the 7th, the 7th of July, 2014, um, your delivery is going to be probably somewhere around January, February. So it is going to take some time, but... It is so well worth it. You know what? There are guys out there that we wait two, three, four years on their books. And there are guys that don't have any open books and they say, well, maybe in five years I'll open up my books. And we're waiting for that. So for somebody to say, hey, in, in eight or nine months, you'll have your knife delivered to your door, I would certainly do it. This will not be my last Kramer, I'll tell you that right now. Um, it may be a little bit larger, just a tiny tad larger than I typically carry. But it is such a well-balanced knife and looks so damn good. And it's so fucking well-built that this is going to be one that I end up carrying in my pocket a whole hell of a lot. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me on this video. I just wanted to kind of get the word out there, and I kind of pushed this ahead of other videos of knives that I bought, even brought home from Blade before this uh, was delivered to me. I just had to get the word out on this. I'm so impressed with him as an individual, so impressed with his insane quality of fit and finish, and he's relatively half the price of anybody else that's putting out similar quality. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go, and I will see you on the next video.